Great. Well, I'm just here to give you a really quick update on really where we've got to with Recorder 6. There isn't time scheduled in the agenda for, for dedicated questions on this topic, but I'm really keen to hear from uh, the MBN uh, and Recorder 6 user community if you've got any questions. So please do put them in that Google document. And if I can't answer them today, then we'll come back to you um, later through the medium of e-newsletters and forums and things like that. Um, if you're wondering what Recorder 6 even is, it's uh, biological data management software. And these days it's used mainly by organisations which are and individuals who are managing large volumes of structured data. Um, and I thought it would be timely to give you an update because three years ago we that the, the original sort of funding and management arrangements for this bit of software ended. Uh, and we didn't know what the management arrangements were going to be and we didn't know where any funding was going to come from um, and we've made a lot of progress since then so this is just a whistle stop tour of that that progress so the first thing to mention is three years ago we we didn't have a list of, of who was using this software um, but by introducing um, a licensing system with support from the MBN Trust, we've been able to establish a picture of who is using this software to the extent that they're willing to, to sign up for that licensing system, uh, which does have a charge at attached to it. And it's a mixture of individual users uh, and organisations, uh, and it's a really diverse range of organisations. That are, There's a lot of almost all, well, most record centres uh, use the Recorder 6 software, but it's not just record centres, it's also national conservation organisations, several national recording schemes, um, different local conservation groups and local recording groups, um, quite a number of individual recorders who are, who are working with large volumes of data or perhaps using biological data for their job. Um, and in that other section, uh, there's several sort of government agencies and the Natural History Museum uh, and Recording Centre for Luxembourg, which is also a big user. So a broad spectrum of users there. Um, the support arrangements that we have in place for the existing software are based entirely on voluntary support uh, from Mike Widelli, the main, main developer, uh, and he is making sure that regular dictionary updates are available when you pay the license fee. Um, but I wanted to use today to say, can we all as users, if you're a user of Recorder 6, manage our expectations of, of Mike? Because he's very happy to support, su support the Recorder 6 user community. Um, but we need those of us who've got technical skills and the ability to, to support each other. If we could all engage with the forum to provide that peer support, that, that would be great to take a bit of pressure off Mike because it, it's unrealistic to expect him to support the whole user community. Um, development, we've commissioned a, a feasibility study on a, um, for a sort of successor version of Recorder, which would work on a web browser. Um, we've, we're really happy with the sort of initial report we've got on that, and we want to do, get our developer, John Van Breeder, to do a bit more work on it so that we can release a prototype to the user community. Uh, and then we'd be really keen to get input from users in testing that and feeding back on it so that we can um, establish more of a roadmap of how we're going to get to to a place where it's it's going to be a useful tool. Uh, and you can get more information about that if you sign up to our Recorder 6 e-newsletters. Um, funding that license fee is bringing in um, around eight to ten thousand pounds a year. So we've got a bit of money there to progress this feasibility work. Um, and we're the, the sort of main aim at the moment is to get a better fix on how much money we need to move that to sort of deployment stage. Um, and the, the steering group will be working on kind of budgeting and funding plans for that in due course. Um, so but supporting two, the license two minutes, Claire. OK, thanks. Yeah, supporting the license fee, um, your money is going into, into that that pot of funding and the Recorder 6 steering group is overseeing how that gets budgeted and spent. And we've we've spent some of that money this year on the, the feasibility work. Um, and I just wanted to finish uh, with all my thank yous. Um, the Recorder 6 consortium have just been incredibly helpful and supportive. 
Um, Mike puts a huge amount of work in. There's my timer. <laughs> um, Sally is continuing to um, make Recorder 6 available to, to new users uh, as a seller. Um, and, and John's working with us as, as a developer as well on the successor system, uh, as well as working with Mike on keeping the existing one going. Um, the steering group means we've got really good view on the whole range of uh, users' interests, uh, and the MBN Trust has been super helpful with all the administration and sort of finance handling help with handling finances, um, and all the users who've kind of got with this got with these new new arrangements, and we're going to need your input even more as we go on. So thank you very much, Claire. That's great. I, now you said there wasn't a chance for questions. We'll, I'll, I'll take one question for you, and then we'll open the questions to the, the, the you know, more generally about the, the, the speakers who came before you. So anybody got a specific question uh, to, to Claire? Just one. I can see somebody's typing into the Google document at the moment. Um, and just while that's coming in, um, oh, I think this is it. What are the priorities for the new web version? Um, right. <laughs> well, it's, that's a big question to answer, um, but essentially keep it, keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> we need to keep the existing data structure so that we don't give users a massive migration job. Um, so at the moment, we're looking at the back end being continuing to be SQL Server or there's, there is a sort of let free version of that, I think that people can use uh, and then a, a browser based front end. Um, we're looking at the feasibility of how we develop the system. We still need to do that sort of prioritization exercise of which bits of functionality we tackle first. And we need to tie that in with what money we've got and where that's coming from. So it's a big question and I will put out more on that, I think, in the next Recorder 6 e-news. Thank you. 